I have got an air-cooled reciprocating chiller in the comp in the reciprocating compressor sight glass. There are always bubbles in the oil. Is that bad? If so, then how to correct the issue? So let's come over here to our handy dandy whiteboard. So in this case, despite the type of compressor, the core fundamentals of this are going to be pretty well the same. So somewhere on the compressor uh, casing, there's going to be a sight glass and we're, and we're going to be able to see some level of oil collected there. Now, in that oil, there's going to be some bubbles. Now, you could have a machine that's running perfectly fine without issue, and you still could have some light bubbles kind of forming around the top, and it's just creating this thin little layer right up here. All right. So those bubbles are mostly normal, and majority of these bubbles to begin with is going to be refrigerant flashing out of the oil. So as the oil and stuff circulates through the system, uh, the, the, with a reciprocating style, we're not using oil separators or stuff for a chiller side of systems. Now, they do have some of that on the, I think, the uh, reefer side, the, the low temp side. But what we're doing, most of our machines are not going to have uh, oil separation. So our oil flows through the suction line, has a very... Basically, just like a scroll compressor or, you know, some of our lower end screw machines uh, like a YCIV, everything gets blended. Um, YCIV is a bad example because we do have an oil separator there. But a scroll machine is a, is a better one where these get blended. The oil flows through the evaporator and the whole process. Uh, we try to minimize how much oil gets into the discharge line and carried out of the compressor. But on some scale, like we're not going to be able to eliminate all oil it's going to be circulated through the system. So that being said, when that oil comes back to the evaporator, it's going to be bonded with a certain volume of, of, of refrigerant into the oil. Now this is going to be vapor refrigerant being our suction line. So when this comes back in suction, hopefully you've got vapor refrigerant coming in and that vapor refrigerant, while that oil is getting stirred and churned and all this stuff is happening in the um, the compression process of just running the compressor, I mean, it's basically a car motor, um, that refrigerant's going to flash or off gas out of that oil and it'll just get taken up into the suction uh, in, in, input ports coming into the heads to get compressed, okay? Very normal, not an issue. So having just a slight little, uh, call it, foamy or frothy film right on top of that that oil level isn't going to cause you any problems. Now, when it does become a concern is when you've got a significant amount of oil stacking up here, okay? So or not oil, foam, okay, or bubbles, however you want to rephrase it. So we start having major uh foaming action happening well above that oil line further up into the sight glass and in some cases you will see this completely fill the sight glass so it's foaming far up above that this would be evidence of you having a low suction superheat so your metering device is overfeeding back into the sight glass and this would be one example okay so uh We'll, we'll start with the low suction superheat first, okay? So low suction, super, we'll just do SH, superheat. Get our acronyms going. Okay, so low suction superheat would be one of them. Now, if your machine's not monitoring suction superheat, uh, these some of these would also monitor discharge, and uh, you can run off discharge superheat as well. So a low discharge superheat is likely going to mean a low suction superheat, so we're just going to keep it simple to there. We are having a lot of either dense or in some cases, if we're if we're foaming up to the top of this sight glass and above, we likely have liquid refrigerant coming back into this compressor. And so what is happening is that that heavy volume of refrigerant, specifically liquid, so that liquid will come. Let me just draw a little small compressor here for a second. We've got a, our compressor head. We have a very a wonderful artist if you couldn't tell all right so here's our sight glass here's our motor 
or crank, yada, yada. So as that liquid refrigerant comes in, uh, I should probably do a different color, we are going to see it come into the, the bottom of the suction line. It's going to go through the stator and motor because that's part of how these compressors are cooled. And then if it was a gas, then it would get just drawn up as a vapor up into our head. But that's not what's going to happen with this liquid refrigerant. So this liquid is going to flow through down here. And then there, most of these compressors will have uh, like oil drain ports because there is a divider wall right here to support this bearing. So you'll have a bearing support here, here, and then some of them may have one back here, even though typically it's just these two. So these will be your two primary bearings for the shaft and for the rotor. So right in here, there will be a like a drip leg port that's intended for oil. So as the oil comes in, it hits the stator and the rotor gets collected and drains down into the bottom of this motor housing. And then it's able to drain over into the rest of the uh, the the compressor belly or the sump, the, the oil reservoir, however you want to phrase it. Well, when liquid refrigerant starts to come in there, it now starts taking the path of that oil. And liquid refrigerant is heavier than oil. It has a heavier specific gravity. And so it will start to collect down here. But as that, but our oil pump is also down here. So there's a lot of, or is pulling from the bottom. So there's a lot of turbulence. There's a lot happening. Most of these cranks will also dip into the oil and splash the oil around in addition to just having the pump run. So there's a lot of turbulence in here. And that turbulence is forcing this liquid refrigerant to flash gas off uh, and turn into a vapor from that liquid. Well, when that happens, we foam up. And all this foaming action is, is a result of that that liquid refrigerant getting in here. And it actually doesn't take that much. It doesn't take a whole lot. You could have a fairly um, a fairly minor flooding action, okay? So where we're not just hardcore just flooding this compressor out, but it's just a very small amount coming in, but it's still coming in to begin with. It's not a fully saturated vapor refrigerant coming back into our compressor. When that happens we will foam. So this is evidence of that. So again, depending on how severe your foaming is, will depend on uh, whether you should be worried or not. And so now this is all in the context of we're already in operation. The compressor is already running. Now let's take this one step further. There's another common situation we'll run into, and that is at startup. So if our crankcase heater is not working, we have low ambient temperatures, something to that effect, another condition would be a flooded start. So with a flooded start, basically we're not necessarily have low suction superheat, so we can just kind of move on from this. But the the if we're inside of our crank here, uh, crank housing, then as the machine is off, we need the crankcase heater to keep this oil warm and by the keeping the oil temperature up we are allowing whatever liquid refrigerant does collect in the bottom of this um of this of the compressor uh, housing to boil off and flash back off and stay out of the oil we want all that refrigerant out of there now in the case that that is not working or there is some condition happening that's allowing that refrigerant to stack in here in a significant way then when that compressor goes to start up it's not going to sound good first of all because this whole process is actually if that oil pump is pulling in oil into the uh the the pump and trying to trying to move that through our uh crankshaft to lubricate all of our bearings and joints that's not going to go so well for for us uh because that's how you put a lot of severe wear um, beyond just risking break breaking a set of valves and the and the um the piston and the heads themselves you're putting a significant amount of stress because we're not able to this refrigerant is not lubricating anything but it is what's at the bottom of your sump so that's issue number one issue number two you're gonna have a major foaming right out the gate so as soon as that compressor turns on it's it's not abnormal to have a little bit happen that's not abnormal what is abnormal is the first several minutes 
or your sight glass immediately turns to straight heavy foaming as soon as that compressor cranks up. That is not okay. That is not normal. And in that situation, uh, again, it comes back to the liquid refrigerant stacking in the bottom of the um, of the of the sump or the the oil reservoir, which is built into the compressor, and that that getting stirred up is flashing that off, creating the foaming action. So those are the two main things that I would be worried about with foam if I'm having excessive foaming. If we've got a, whether we're at part load, full load, whatever, if we've just got a very minor amount, like I said in the very beginning with this little blue line where it's just, it's just a little bit of action, I would consider that perfectly fine. I would consider that perfectly normal. I wouldn't be worried about that. It's when this escalates to the whole sight glass where a large portion, it doesn't have to be the incomplete sight glass. If we get to where we've got a full standing column of foam happening like this, that's when I want to investigate. I just want a teeny little layer if I'm going to have any at all.